greetings and good tidings, everyone. So this time of year, we usually give thanks to all that we have. Family, friends, small devil-like animals that destroy our possessions in the shape of a cat. But as I watched the HBO series Chernobyl, I found myself thankful the disaster never spiraled out of control. A question, though, lingered in my mind, one I hope to answer today. And that is, what if the Chernobyl disaster went differently? What if it exploded? But before I dive into the topic in more detail, a bit of context. April 26, 1986, a standard safety test spiraled out of control in Ukraine. Incompetence of the test and poor design of the fuel rods resulted in nuclear reactor number four detonating. Radiation beamed to the night sky, unleashing its deadly effects upon the surrounding populace. Those near, especially the city of Pripyat, were forced to leave their homes due to dangerous exposure levels while the reactor's radiation flowed across Europe. Thanks in part to thousands of brave souls, the disaster was mitigated with the reactor sealed in a tomb, which contains its radioactive poison to this day. This is probably the story you're most familiar with. It's the one I always knew about, but upon watching HBO's Chernobyl, I realized the threat of a second explosion. See, water first used at the site to fight the fires of the explosion collected in storage tanks beneath the facility. Not a major concern, unless the superheated material that once was the core melted into these tanks. The resulting explosion from water vaporizing into steam would equate to roughly two to four megatons of force. For perspective, Castle Bravo, the hydrogen bomb we dropped in the Pacific that hit the Lucky Dragon number five, was 15 megatons. But the danger wouldn't be the explosive yield, no. But I'll explain more of that later. Luckily in our timeline, three men drained these tanks, saving millions of lives. But I ask, what would have happened if they didn't? So, in an alternate timeline, the danger is never discovered, another oversight that isn't realized until a shockwave rips through Belarus and Ukraine. Now, for this thought experiment, I'm going to be going by the show's numbers, as estimates range wildly for this hypothetical situation. The details would be as following. A 2 to 4 megaton explosion, a 30 kilometer radius around the facility instantly erased from the thermodynamic explosion, a 200 kilometer radius immediately turned into an unlivable radioactive hotbed, and yeah, long story short, in the span of seconds, a disaster turns into a living nightmare for most of Europe. Remember how I mentioned the blast wasn't the true threat? Well, this is due to the explosion basically acting like a dirty bomb. Most wouldn't die by the explosion, though many would, but the radiation from the multiple cores is caught in the explosion. Radioactive material from the Soviet nuclear facility's reactors would rain down upon Eastern Europe, and so the poison would begin its spread. The worst affected would be Belarus and Ukraine, who would see their lands immediately impacted by the shockwave. Radioactive material from the RBMK reactor would rain down upon them, bringing sickness and death along with it. There is no ability to contain the poison. The material is too widespread, too dangerous, and too overwhelming to even begin to contain. Very quickly, the radiation overflowing present infects the land, and as people begin to die, the need to escape would become ever greater. 60 million people lived in these countries in the late 1980s. How many die or evacuate, I cannot say but I know there wouldn't be a sizable population there for long. Refugees would pour out of the worst impacted zones as hospitals become flooded with those sick, dying, or dead. Imagine images of Pripyat, a city seemingly abandoned in a moment, except they represent the entirety of Belarus and Ukraine, and bordering lands in Russia, a radioactive exclusion zone that would separate Europe from Asia, or in this world, the Soviet republics for, with their overlord. In essence, all of Eastern Europe would now be exposed to highly dangerous levels of radiation. Governments would try to minimize the effects of Chernobyl's detonation, but they would immediately find themselves in a losing war. Trying to remove the radioactive debris from the reactor that fell within your territory? Well, a windy day or a harsh storm can blow more pieces of graphite or other materials right back over your border. Regardless, food and water would become scarce as local flora and fauna become exposed with water sources like the Danube, Dnieper, and Vitsula following suit. Not helping as well would be the USSR's trade position. Due to poor international relations in the 1980s, trade was primarily focused on its republic, so a massive disruption to this network would result in supply shortages. A country like Romania would find its economy and resources ruined in the span of weeks, dissolving stability of the country. The Soviet Union would collapse in a chaotic fashion as self-preservation takes priority. And thus, the Iron Curtain shatters, unleashing millions of fleeing refugees upon Western Europe. 
If you think that Western Europe is celebrating the fast death of the USSR, think again. Millions of refugees would flee westward into West Germany, France, Spain, Italy, trying to escape the reactive plight. Europe's current migrant crisis would look, seem like a drop in the bucket as Eastern Europe rapidly depopulates. Radiation would still affect those in Western Europe, as it, it did in our own timeline, but now those resources and more be used trying to help and possibly repulse those fleeing Eastern Europe. All this while a global economy gradually begins to crash. So most might think that the Soviet Union was isolated from the world in its trade, and that is simply not true. Resources and goods flowed into and out of the 15 nations that comprised it, so a dramatic halt in trade which flowed out of the Union would have rippling effects across the world. China, for example, supplied abundant natural resources to its fellow communist state and would see the trade dry up. As economies in more open markets feel the loss, a worldwide recession gradually takes hold, even in the US. As weeks turn to years, Europe becomes a shell of its former self. True, some nations do remain intact, but it is far from the power that it once was. Nuclear reactors across the world, stoked by fear of another incident taking place, would be shut down. I can imagine protests even in the US as nuclear-armed countries find their populace arguing for an elimination of nuclear weapons. I doubt that all nations would denuclearize their arsenals completely, but a worldwide elimination of nuclear power would follow suit. Not great for global warming as fossil fuels fill the void, probably resulting in more conflict in resource-rich nations, but it is a necessity compared to the evil which has been unleashed upon Europe. Chernobyl detonating wouldn't have caused the end of the world, but have horribly scarred an already divided one. Luckily, this never happened. Brave men and women sealed Pandora's box, and while its effects remain to this day, theorizing what could have happened leaves me thankful it never did. And hopefully, as we approach the new year and think of the future, it never will. So that is the final what if of 2019. I hope you guys enjoyed this. It was a little bit darker, but I found it very interesting. And again, Chernobyl, great show. I know I used a lot of the information, but it was just so amazing. My thought, pro my mind was just racing with like, what if this did happen? But regardless, if you guys have your own ideas that are keeping you up at night, let me know in the comments down below and I might take a look. Until next time though, I'll catch you all later. Hello everyone, this is Grayshaw. Before I go, I want to give a special shout out to Patreon supporters Josh, Malam, Joey G240, Just Thomas Plays, Spartacus, Rifle, Junior Chicklist, Pyroshark, Ollie, Ace, GTA, and Jacob Oswai. Thank you all for your incredible support. This has been Grayshaw17 and his amazing patrons, and I'll see you all next time.